Hello and welcome back to the channel. We are two Vikings from the channel North Worry Sagas and Stories. Hello folks, how are you? Now before you watch this video, which we hope to be entertaining and also give some value to you guys, and let's not forget the ladies. Hello there girls. Hi. Today we're going to talk about very briefly the Blue Men of Mint. Wow. What are the Blue Men of Mint? What do they look like and where did they live? Over to Egil Thorson, who knows a lot about this subject. All right, <laughs> that's my confidence in me. Blue men of I'll be honest, I'd never heard of them until I uh, it was brought to my attention. Indeed. But having said that, they are very interesting creatures. Yes. Uh, said they were spirits uh, brought over by the Norwegians to Ireland, and the reason they were called the Blue Men was because of their tattoos. Whether well, that's the case or not, well, I don't then, know. Or perhaps Wode. It could be Wode. Um, that might actually be uh, the reason. I leave that to you to suggest. But uh, what purpose do you think they served? Well, they were often known for, to be used for wrecking ships. And they would go out when they're at sea. You know, there they are. Mm. You, you, mm. You're in the sea and your bowl's going on your boat. And these, like, spirit men would go out. Mm. and try to wreck the ship and you know the captain or whoever is in charge of the ship they could try to fight them off well also i mean they, they do sound like mermaids in a way but they're not mermaids they sound like wreckers you know they but, use yes. shine the light um the thing is i mean you think you're living in relative poverty most of us well of course so, so if a ship flounders there's money to be made and luxury goods uh, I'm minded of the fact, uh, I don't know if you remember, a ship came, uh, got wrecked, and the local villages of Branscombe, yes. uh, they ended up with motorbikes and God knows what, which, although that, I think they were quite legal in doing it, they were yeah, made to hand it all I back. think in maritime law, if you salvage something from a wreck, yeah. you can claim it to be yours, I think. Yeah, but and I know there's been a few cases, sorry to interrupt, yeah. where a, a ship with containers has landed on the beach, mm. and... All the content spilled out and the local just went mad. Yeah. But it also reminds me of the film Whiskey Galore. Oh, if yeah. you've never seen the film, it's a black and white film from, what, the 50s? Yeah. Where a ship with a load of whiskey basically landed on this Scottish island and then all the locals being Scottish and mad for whiskey all went crazy and got everything and hid it all. And then all these taxmen were trying to come on the island and find out, well, where's all this whiskey from the shipwreck? Well, you can see you the know? point. I mean, they're brewing the whiskey and it's being sent to other people and they're being taxed on it and everything else. So, yeah, go for it. Was it the HMS Cabinet Minister or something that sang? I've got the book. Yes. Uh, I had tried reading it, but... Uh, That's the problem when you talk about something on the spur of the moment. Mm. You can't always remember all the details. Well, I mean, I know Gordon Jackson was in the film, um, and they hid it beautifully. Oh, well, they did, yeah. It's a great yeah. black and white film. I do recommend it. If I can find a link in, in, to on YouTube to a yeah. trailer, I'll try to remember to post it. But, I mean, um, you could see why things like Blue Men are invented, because it's you could at least put the blame somewhere, and you would say, well, that's nature, it's the tides. It's the little Blue Men did it. Is it to explain why ships get wrecked? Is that why they was invented? Well, I mean, ships get wrecked, don't they? I mean, they do to do do today. Well, indeed they do. Um, even mm. with all the sophistication they've got of sat navs and things like that, you can't. The oh, sea is look at the ship, uh, the Derbyshire. I, yeah. I, I don't think they've ever found that, have they? Well, let's put it this way. This is a tale. A good sailor will not necessarily love the sea, but will respect it. Oh, yes. And will it's things happen with the sea? You just got to accept it. Now, why was it Norwegian sailors brought this to Ireland? Is this something that goes back to the Viking times? Do you think? I would imagine so, because uh, Dublin um, yes. was a Viking settlement. Magnus uh, Bear Legs. That's him. And uh, you know, it was Dunblean, Blackpool, um, or Darkpool, and they tried to resettle Ireland. And this thing about the Irish, they are very resilient people, very proud in them. Oh, they are, yes. You think the Vikings tried to take over the Ireland, Normans tried to take over Ireland, Elizabethan soldiers tried to take over Ireland, 
and in 1916 tried to take over Ireland. So nice one there to our Irish friends. Keep that independence. Oh, of course so, yeah. yes. It's a lovely country. I do recommend going to Ireland and visiting Dublin and also visiting Cork. Yeah. But, were you, were uh, you on that trip where we went to Admar Studios? No, I did not do that trip. I was oh. at a Viking there, Meg. I think just before oh. my time. Well, I went. we went to Ardmore Studios oh. in Dublin. A bonus story. And uh, we also went to Clos McNoyes. Interesting fact about Clos McNoyes. Yes. It's a tower where the monks stored the treasure and the Vikings raided it 17 times. 17, wow. However, the Irish raided it 27 times. Oh, right. So, so it was, I- Irish 27, Viking 17. It's a beautiful country with beautiful people. And I, if you ever get the chance to go, oh, it's beautiful country. There's some very nice people there as well. Don't be too English. Oh, yes. Now, is that where the Kingstone is? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I mean, as I say, we went there and also to the beaches of Connemara. I'm not certain we've got the name of the stone, right? No. I think it does have a proper name, but I forget. Well, the Blarney Stone. Uh, there you go, Eggle knows everything. Yeah, the Blarney Stone is set in, you've got to lean over that. No, I don't do heights. No. Um, but if you ever go to Connemara, on the beach, beautiful sand, and there's massive bits of marble. Yes. We, did, we filmed the... Uh, we were doing a video for, um, yeah, uh, I can't remember who it was for, but it was in Scotland um, about the Viking invasions there. Oh, so you could be on a missing YouTube video out there. Look for Eggle. Well, the funny thing is, if you look through the whole video, I'm 150 years old in the same clothes. Oh, right. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's great food, great crack out in Ireland. They're great people. And, of course, Guinness. Well, I'm going to shock you now. I prefer English Guinness. Over uh, Irish. I think Irish tastes better. I think it tastes like metal polish, but that's just me. Um, I prefer the English draft. Really? Oh, yeah. Have you tried much Irish? So, yeah, I gave it a go, let me tell you. Yeah. An interesting fact as well, they have to serve an apprenticeship, the barman, to serve Guinness. Do they? Oh, oh right. Four years. It's a very funny drink start, isn't it? It's lovely. <laughs> it's the only beer I could drink. Yes. That Castle Brown. Three pints and he's anybody's. Yeah, I, can't, <laughs> I can drink a bottle of brandy, no problem. Do that, isn't it? But two and a half pints of Guinness and I've gone. And also mixing drinks isn't good for me. No. But, uh, anyway, so, Blue Men. Yeah, I think the Blue Men of yeah. Mint, that's a brief chat about it. Yeah. And I think at some point in the future, uh, one of us will do some further research Ooh. and make some notes. And do a much longer presentation in a more professional manner. And send us your comments. Oh, yes. Uh, but don't literally send them in an envelope, though. <laughs> you know how to do it normally. And also send us your likes and dislikes so that we know what to do. Because we're guided by you, believe it or not. Ah, I've just been reminded about something. Ooh. Now, do you know that if you do that on a video, mm. or that on a video to say OK, mm. it is very highly offensive in some cultures? Oh, so we must remember never to do thumbs up and OK signs, because you never know who you could be offending. And that's the thing, I, I, I never that, really thought about that in hand isn't, gestures. Isn't that the logo you press for like and dislike? Well, there is a thumbs up, granted, mm. and there's a thumbs down. Mm. So we'll n- like nothing, nothing wrong with... Oh no, but I'm just trying to say yeah. to you that in some cultures... Put, doing that and putting your thumb up is very highly offensive. Well, there's also the Gurkhas who never point, use your chin, and never touch a Gurkha at the back of his neck. Really? Yeah. Do, don't point fingers, Gurkhas? No, they do that. Say you want to look at that chair, you go like this. Do you know what a Gurkha is? Finest warriors we've ever had in Indeed. our army. And they should be treated better. Yes. But, but well done to uh, um, that lady. Who did a lot of work Joanna for them. Yes, I can't remember her name then. Well done, Joanna. Yeah, I think you did a fantastic job supporting the Gurkhas, and I think it's pretty shameful Ooh. that the British government don't recognise the fact that they have served and, and fought for our country. Well, I mean, you know, we move heaven and earth for Syrians, Romanians, but we do nothing for the Gurkhas. Oh, yeah, but we should always uh, be a bigger nation and help other nations out when they need it. Yeah, you help them you out, know. but I mean... 
So your Gurkhas have earned it and I'll oh, earn it now. I mean, I've got a cookery knife and a lethal. I'm glad you're on our side. I mean, put that my way. God, yeah. Could you imagine facing a Gurkha? I once did a corporate for um, Covid and we went to Infal Barracks and yes. the Gurkhas had just come back from Afghanistan. Two eight year old children, eight, there's about a thousand people dancing around whirling these cookeries. I thought, yeah. But they were razor sharp. They were laughing like brains. That reminds me of the story how uh, Godfrey Menel mm. won the VC. Oh, yeah, in the 30s, was it? Well, I think it was in World War I, mm. or maybe early in the 1890s, one about that. Anyway, it was in, it was in Turkey, mm. and they were fighting the Turks for some reason. I, I think it's World War I myself. Yeah, it is, if they're fighting Turks. And... Uh, Godfrey Menel, who's, who's an old officer, they're all called Godfrey Menel down yeah. the line, so it's a bit complicated that. Well, he was an officer and he was in charge of some Gurkhas. And they had to go and take on a whole battalion of machine gunners, which is not a nice thing to do, is it? No. And so he charged the machine gunners with the Gurkhas. I can imagine the machine gunners seeing a whole mad bunch of Gurkhas would have probably crapped themselves, but I would have done. And so they managed to charge and uh, Colonel or officer. Uh, uh, Menel yeah. got shot, was wounded, and then they realised once they managed to attack and take the machine guns off the Turks that they were being attacked by a whole battalion of infantry. So they had no option but to turn the machine guns around and um, basically take on the battalion, which they did. And unfortunately, um, Godfrey Menel, the officer of this regiment, died in the process mm. and was awarded afterwards the VC. The VC. And the cry of the Gurkhas, Ay, Uncle Kelly! Oh, I didn't know they had a yeah, cry. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, Once God. you hear that, mate, you better hope they're on your side. Well, I walked past the other day in Derby, the Gurkha restaurant. Yeah. Well, the Gurkhas in World War II, you'd be sitting in your tent and they'd touch there on your boot. Yeah. And if it was crossed, you lost your head. Oh, right. Because the British Army always do their arm laces um, straight. <laughs> straight, that is. Um... Uh, which upset the Americans, because they do cross garter. Which one would you join? The French Foreign Legion or the Gurkhas? Gurkhas. Yeah. Ah, uh, noble general. Do you know what? The Gurkha Regiment is the only regiment in the British Army where they don't shout at them. Do they not? No, they I fall don't... in naturally and... Uh, no bad mouth Prince Charles unless you want trouble. But, I mean, they actually, I've seen them, they just fall in, in step. And uh, it's natural. I think at some point we're going to do a comparison between a, a, a Siax and mm. a Gurkha knife because I think that would make a very interesting video. Depends on how you use it. I mean, the chest or manhood have the good cookery and they bring a box and you have to go in one swipe, take the head off. Well, that's uh, got to be pretty sharp for that. Oh, yeah, and strong. And then they have to run this assault course because they can only take so many. And you know, if, the, if you pass. It's great on the, on your family. If they fail, they've had people kill themselves. Yeah, you can imagine that. One of the most touching stories about Gurkhas was this old guy on the VC in World War II. And they had to go down the mountain. And his son put him in a basket on his back. And he carried him down the mountain and back because it was his dad. And I thought... Well, well you do everything for your dad. Like, I do everything for my father, Magnar. Yeah. yeah, he's the Mrs. Manuing of the ch You're never going to see him, but you'll often hear about him. Yeah. Yes. But uh, I just thought what great people they were, and they were given a tap. Wow, you know, and they're so grateful for it. Well, we should be giving them a lot more than that. Oh, yes, we should. And they should have automatic British citizens. I'd like to get to the point where we are going to end this video. But just before I do, I'd just like to say congratulations to a friend of mine. His name is Oxford, uh, James, and he very recently, the last couple of months, become an officer in the British Army. And oh. I believe he's an officer working as a lawyer. That's what, what I yeah. think he's doing. Oh, well. uh, I've seen some great photographs of you all in your nice officer uniform. And I think, you know, if there's anybody I knew in my life who deserved to be an officer, and, you know, it's James. Well done, mate. Well, also, remember what I was told in the TA. Don't run, it frightens the men. <laughs> There you go. And if I remember, I may let him know about that little say. Okay. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not speaking right now. Yeah, little yeah. mention. There you go. Yeah. It's probably time for signing off then. It is. Goodbye. Wave. Bye.